I don't wanna hear no more sad poems and songs Of how it could be better if we all got along All they're asking for is clothes to put on Just enough food to eat before it's all gone No time to debate who's right and who's wrong Man made it from God, someone tagged all along In a time like this, I know you wish you had pride To tuck in because pain is the hardest thing to hide In the most strangest ways, it shows in your eyes And I don't wanna see that, I just wanna see you smile my name is Abdi Phenomenal from Poet Nation. I'm a spoken word artist from Minneapolis, Minnesota, originally from Somalia. I'm a teaching and performing artist who seeks to elevate and inspire youth in Somalia and around the world through the art of spoken word poetry. I want to help young people become leaders and decision makers in the world. My mission is to help my fellow young people. Somalis are from the nation of poets and poetry is how we communicate. Um, one of the main reasons why we left Somalia, as you all know, is because the war that has broke out back in 1991. Um, I left there when I was a young kid. Um, all the only memories that I have that I remember is, you know, just standing outside with my mom and my brothers and my sisters right after the war broke out. And uh, all I remember was just seeing soldiers. I remember a bunch of people just running around. I remember gunshots, I, I remember hearing gunshots. And right after the war broke out, my mom was trying to figure out, she, she had five kids with her, all five of us, and she didn't know exactly like what to do. Families were torn apart during the war, um, so she, she took us and uh, took us out of, right out of Somalia. Right after we left Somalia, we stayed in Dadaab for about five years. So right after those five years, um, my aunt in New York, she sponsored me and my, me and my mom and you know my brothers to come over there. And then I moved to Minneapolis, Minnesota because I had some more relatives over there. At that time, there were more and more Somalis coming to Minneapolis. This is the second time that this famine is happening in the last 20 years. And this time it's gotten a lot worse. A lot worse and it needs attention. And this is the reason why we're doing the Voices of Dadaab so everybody in the world can hear, you know, the voices of Dadaab, the voices of the people that are going through this thing. And through connecting, we'll hopefully create change.
15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay. We're giving each family three bottles of water, yep. uh, ten pieces of cookies, yep. six pairs of shoes, yep. 3.3 kilograms of it. Yep. Okay. So what we're doing here is uh, we're rationing out some of the um, some of the products that we brought. There's um, in this little village here. There's 80 families. So um, we're giving three liters of water per family, um, ten packets of biscuits, three kilos of dates. Um, in each family is an average of six people, so we're giving six pairs of slippers per family. And um, also we're giving each family two kilos of powdered milk. Um, at the moment, you know, that's the best we can do, you know, with the little supplies that we've got. But hopefully, you know, we can um, come back and try to assist these people even more. We were told that there were 80 families here, each family average of uh, five to six people. Um, one big box? Yeah, bring it. Bring it. Yeah, two big ones and three small ones. We're just trying to do our best. Oh, this is size two. ولكنها <تصفيق>
Dale. Dale. The youth here in Africa decided that the ration of food that they get every day, that they will give half of what they get to the newcomers. Because the newcomers usually it takes days for them to be registered to get even uh, food, to get shelters. And, and also the youth uh, who are in the diaspora themselves, uh, I'm very happy for them, are uh, organizing uh, uh, fundraising, car wash uh, fundraising and uh, concerts and such things. And it's very positive that they are helping the people. Mm -hmm. This one right here is Ifo camp. So now, over the years, it has changed. It's one of the oldest camps over here, one of the first ones that was built. Um, they have three different sections now because over the years, it has grown. The population of the refugee camps have grown. There's so many that are coming in every single day. Um, this place, we haven't stayed here for long. We were here for a short period of time. And I believe the time that I was here was when I got malaria and went to Nairobi. Uh, and I got hospitalized over there. I mean, there are hard times. Uh, everybody goes through a lot of different things. I've seen there's a couple of girls that were walking, um, that were going out and, and as a job, they go out there and they cut wood and they bring back wood back home to build huts. Just watch normal people walk, you know? Um, just kind of kind of reminded me of when I was younger and you know, when I was here. Another job that, that have, they have, the little kids have over here is to ride those little, the sheeps that are over there. They just follow those around uh, for a couple of hours, like from the morning all the way into the afternoon, so they can go and get something to eat, give them some water, and uh, bring them back to the owner. Now, I was thinking a whole family owns that. And those are the lucky families that have you know, things to eat. But not everybody's lucky enough to have that. Most of them survive off of money wiring uh, banks over here. So this is like when you send money back home, um, you know, sometimes like in Kenya, these refugee camps, they have those banks that you send it to. Now that family could be living off of that money to be doing stuff or maybe own a business. graphic I've seen a pregnant mom with one of them that really made me emotional so this lady was walking 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 and she got really really tired and I can tell that she has a little daughter with her and she's pregnant literally she's like nine months pregnant and she gets to this gate where they hand out food she was extremely fatigued to the point where she can't even get to the gate and get in line for food so she just fell to the floor and she just sat there this is a pregnant woman that had to drink for days, ate for days, and I was seeing all this, and it just made me really emotional, really emotional. I started crying, I didn't know what to do. It's just like flashbacks, flashbacks of when we were there. I mean, I could see those images live where I was, and it felt like for a second, you know, that was, that I was there, that was me.
My name is Ibrahim Abdullah I'm 17 years old. My name is Jirdan Qatar Bashir. I'm 23 years old. I'm called Sarah Abdel. I'm 23 years old. I'm here for almost 20 years. 19 years you lived here in Hagadera? Yeah. Uh, did you live uh, outside Hagadera? When I fled from my country, Somali, I just came here in refugee. And I'm not uh, going outside of the refugees. Uh, when I came, I was four years old. I flew from there, I called um, Mogadishu. What problems forced you out of Mogadishu by then? I'm not remember, but just my dad, my father told me that he has got some problem <coughs> from Somalia. Yeah. I wish to be, to be a teacher, a doctor, so to help my, my community. Uh, you've lived here the last 17 years as a child? Yes. Are you a Somali, are you a Kenyan, or who are you? I'm a refugee. I'm a Somali, but now I'm a refugee. I'm not a Kenyan, because I don't have ID. That's why I'm a, I'm a refugee. Do you wish to go back to Somalia? Fit to The refugee camp to the dark, I visited there three months ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, I met uh, the parents who literally uh, I've seen a mom who cried. She told me that uh, lately um, the problem that they had was that uh, the, the youth when they finish high school in the camps, uh, the UNHCR or the, or, the, or the authorities will not allow them to go to universities. They cannot go to universities and they are unemployed. What happened is that most of the kids, uh, youth, when they are idling, they go into a uh, Jew and Mira you know, a cut, yeah. uh, drugs, mm -hmm. and, and, and doing bad things. And she was crying, telling me, please, Ambassador, help us, uh, these kids, get jobs or universities. And Alhamdulillah, I have to say that uh, after lobbying and, and, and talking to the government, uh, last month we succeeded in uh, getting scholarships for these youth. In the Hagardere refugee camp, there's a group of eight of them, and they put in $500 together. And basically, they created their own business to supply power to the refugee camp areas. And I believe right now, I was told that they um, generate power for about 208 families. You know, a lot of the young kids are doing a lot of great things. Earlier today, too, as well, I also met a lot of younger kids that are just happy, jumping around. There's a group of us that went in. <laughs> I was just sharing my spoken word poetry with them. In fact, I was talking to one of the kids uh, about reciting a poem to me. He's a little shy, but I was trying to, you know, we're, we're about to go back there too, and uh, I'm gonna try to get it out of him so he could share, you know, some of his spoken word out and share it with the world. Mercy ain't for the weak, look at the burden I carry. And if the bodies hit the floor, no time for burying. See, mothers is fatigued and confused, hiding with five kids that didn't choose to live in this life to be exhausted. But the only thing that mattered now, they lost it. Never anticipate Somali to be the same. Lost hope, no hope, no room for change. But still, there is peace. Can you guys all say peace? Peace! Hello, hello.
We met a group of uh, youth who are like a band in the refugee camps and uh, they're musicians. They talk about a lot about like Somalia issues, Somali issues, uh, things that they go through every single day. Um, and the nice thing about it is this group, they're so, so talented. There's a girl that sings and there's another guy that sings, his name's Ahmed as well. Everybody is created equal and everybody is equal. No matter who you are, no matter what gender you are, no matter what sex you are, what religion you are, we're all the same. Uh, the future lies in the youth now. Uh, being the ones who are inside Somalia, the ones who are in the refugee camps, the ones who are in the diaspora. I think uh, it's their time. It's a time for the new generation. I think they can do a lot. And I'm, and, and I'm very positive and optimistic uh, by seeing such people like yourself coming back. Uh, I think more will come. And I see a light at the end of the tunnel, uh, which is very bright. I just hope that it's not a train coming in.